that the new one? No. no. I have it all like not. Bring it here. Very nice. Very nice. Enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nor us, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We need to check in on your Southwest Airlines. Link. Good morning. I'd like to call the City Council meeting for May 25th. First, 2014 to order and I would like the record to reflect that all council members and city officials are present. Please stand for the invocation and pledge of allegiance. Our Heavenly Father, we ask thy continued help and understanding in our council decisions made today. Grant us, Lord, that we will not be anxious about earthly things but to have things heavenly and even now while we are placed among things that seem to be passing heavenly, even to hold fast to those that shall endure, we ask that you give us your wisdom. Make the right and proper decisions and continue to hold in your hands forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We have some special proclamations and presentations this morning. I call it Charlotte County celebrities are here with us today, and we're very honored to have them here. And the first proclamation we have is Barbara T. Scott Day, which I will read. Proclamation City of Punta Gorda, Florida, whereas Barbara T. Scott has served Charlotte County, Florida with distinguished and outstanding service since 1975. And whereas she has served the county from its county seat in Punta Gorda, Florida as the clerk of the circuit court continuously for 30 years. And whereas during her eight term tenure as clerk, she has also served as the county treasurer, county auditor, recorder, and clerk accountant to the board of county commissioners. And whereas her length of service to the county includes many worthwhile and lasting accomplishments, and whereas Barbara T. Scott has also chaired or otherwise been involved with many Charlotte County charitable organizations such as the United Way, CARE, the Salvation Army, Alzheimer's Association, March of Dimes, For the Love of Kids, and the Charlotte County Homeless Coalition. Now, therefore, the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, does hereby proclaim May 21, 2014, as Barbara T. Scott Day throughout the community and to recognize her for her outstanding and dedicated service to the citizens of Punta Gorda and all of Charlotte County, Florida, passed and duly adopted in this regular session this 21st day of May 2014, Rachel Kiesling Mayor. And accepting will be Barbara T. Scott. So nice to meet another short person. Just <laughs> um, give me a, a few seconds. First of all, I am very pleased and honored to receive this recognition for my time of service. Uh, it's actually been 41 years, and let me explain that. Uh, my husband and I lived in Cape Coral, and I traveled here around the circuit for two years working with the courts. And I worked with the judges here in Charlotte County, the county and circuit court judges, and the clerk to establish their programs. So 39 years in the clerk's office, 30 years as a clerk. It, it's been a wonderful experience. There's always good and bad, and I've always been so fortunate. I've had a tremendous crew to work with. My staff is fantastic. I picked pick the right people, the right team, and you all know that makes a difference. And quite a few of them are here today, mainly because they wanted to be sure I got here on time. <laughs> And my husband started two hours ago to make sure I was out the door, so it worked out very well. Uh, but I was very pleased to be here. So it's it is great you recognize me for this. And working for all these things uh, in the community, like you all do, is very special to me. And we've been here since 1976. We traveled for a year. And uh, 
it just means a lot. Thank you. And it's also very special today, too, for me, because momentarily, and just about that, maybe a couple of seconds, uh, you'll be introducing another woman who I consider a very good friend and very worthy. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. And next we have the Katherine Hollinger Straighten Day Proclamation and Council Member Prafke will present. It's my honor. This is a proclamation, City of Punta Gorda, Florida, whereas Katherine Hollinger Straighten will be honored by the Cultural Center of Charlotte County with its 17th Annual Honoree Award on June 1st, 2014. And whereas Mrs. Straighten has made significant contributions to the community of Punta Gorda, Florida over many years. And whereas, she was instrumental in establishing the Charlotte Symphony Orchestra's first formal fundraising program, Holiday Magic, which has become one of Punta Gorda's most enduring, elaborate, and successful efforts in art philanthropy. And whereas, her commitment to and investment in numerous pri pioneering arts, education, and health-related endeavors demonstrates her service to the community. And whereas, City Council wishes to honor Mrs. Straighton for her, her enduring commitment to, the enrich, to enriching the Punta Gorda community and recognize the award bestowed upon her by the Cultural Center. Now therefore, the City of Punta Gorda, Florida does hereby proclaim May 21st, 2014 as Catherine Hollinger Straighten Day, passed and duly adopted in regular session this 21st day of May 2014, City of Punta Gorda, Florida, Rachel Kiesling, Mayor. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've had <laughs> Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I have had such a blast for the past 40 years. This is a wonderful, wonderful memento for me. It will be framed and over my desk. And I just want all of you to know that volunteerism, the spirit of volunteerism, and Punta Gorda is very healthy, doing very well, very alive. And your leadership skills are such an enhancement to everyone to want to do more. Please continue. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we have Code Enforcement Officers Appreciation Week, and Council Member Devine will present. My pleasure. Proclamation City of Punta Gorda, Florida, whereas code enforcement officers provide for the safety, health, and welfare of the citizens in this community through the enforcement of building, zoning, housing, animal control, fire safety, environmental, and other code and ordinances. And whereas code enforcement officers are often not credited for the jobs that they do in saving lives and improving neighborhoods. And whereas every day, assisted by support and program staff, they attempt to provide quality customer service to the public for the betterment of the community. And whereas too many times their efforts go unnoticed, even after code compliance has been accomplished due to their efforts and expertise. And whereas code enforcement officers are dedicated, well-trained, and highly responsible individuals who take their jobs seriously and are proud of their department and the local government within which they serve. And whereas the Florida Association of Code Enforcement, uh, Code Enforcement has declared the first week of June be set aside by local governments to honor and recognize their code enforcement officers. Now therefore, the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida does hereby proclaim the week of June 2nd through 6, 2014 as Code Enforcement Officers Appreciation Week. In the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, in accordance with the statewide observance of the same, and encourages citizens of Punta Gorda to join this council in expressing appreciation for the dedication and outstanding services provided by the individuals who serve as our code enforcement officers. Passed it and duly adopted in regular session this 21st day of May, 2014, City of Punta Gorda, Rachel Kiesling, Mayor. And accepting is Terry Tubbs. And we do have the best code enforcement department. We do. We do. <laughs> Thank God people love that job. 
I want to thank the council for uh, taking the time and uh, the proclamation to acknowledge the hard work that this uh, team does. I think they do a great job, and I'm proud to have them. Thank you. Thank you. If I could add a statement, I truly love these guys. They're the ones that are able to go out and tell people these things. It's, it's absolutely awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing a job that most people probably wouldn't want to do and, and doing it with pride. I, I know I would not probably be a good code enforcement officer, so thank you for stepping up and doing that job. Any of you recognize them? <laughs> <laughs> okay, next we have Florida Democratic Women's Month and Council Member Freeland will present. Thank you. Proclamation, City of Hunter Gorda, Florida. Whereas Democratic women of every race, class, and ethnic background have made historic contributions to the growth and strength of the great state of Florida in countless recorded and unrecorded ways, and whereas Democratic women have played and continue to play critical economic, cultural, and social role in every sphere of life across our state by constituting a significant portion of the labor force working inside and outside of the home, and whereas Democratic women have played a unique role throughout history of our state by providing the majority of the volunteer labor workforce, and whereas Democratic women have played important roles in the establishment of charitable, philanthropic, and cultural institutions, and whereas Democratic women of every race, class, and ethnic background continue to serve as leaders in the forefront of progressive social change movement, and whereas despite these contributions, the role of Democratic women in Florida history has been consistently overlooked and undervalued in the literature, teaching, and study of our nation's history. Now, therefore, the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, does hereby proclaim the month of May 2014 Florida Democratic Women's Month and calls upon citizens to recognize the month with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities. Passed and duly adopted in regular session this 21st day of May 2014, City of Punta Gorda, Florida, Rachel Kiesling, Mayor, and accepting is Nancy Rizboza. Is that correct? You want to Very up? good. You, want to you up, said Nancy? my name, Charrell. <laughs> I'll just say thank you very much to an outstanding city council that I'm very proud of. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And next we have a special presentation. A couple, about a month ago, some of the chambers got together and one of their ideas was the end of the season celebration was going to be the Chamber Cup Challenge, which included really seven different chambers, five of which were in healthy competition to win the first ever issued Chamber Cup. Well, in the city of Punta Gorda and in the Punta Gorda Chamber, we like healthy competition, but we always know that we want to win. Now, I will tell you the free beer, free wine, and free food really didn't have a lot to do with it, <laughs> but we did, we did travel out to Englewood, and some of us actually took the plain air trolley, shall I say, the fresh air trolley, and it was so fun, and we won by one person, 97 did we have? We had 97 Punta Gorda Chamber members show up at the Englewood Event Center, and we brought home the cup. So accepting the cup this morning will be Ron Monk and Della Booth, or co-chairs of the Punta Gorda Chamber. And I would like the others that, that were part of the event, if you want to come forward too, please do. Uh, just a few words. <laughs> I'd like to uh, actually thank the, uh, the City Council for uh, presenting this to us today. We really appreciate it. I would also like to uh, thank Mayor Kiesling. I understand she was our biggest cheerleader and, uh, and really rallied the troops and, uh, and got things going. So thank you very much, Mayor. We appreciate your participation and being there to, uh, to assist us winning this first first winning of the trophy, we'll keep it forever. We're not going to let anybody else have it. I have um, no doubt. Part, part of our mission, as you know, at the Chamber is to promote, uh, 
promote the community, promote economic growth and economic development in Punta Gorda and the surrounding areas. We're reaching out now to take over Englewood. So uh, <laughs> just be aware we're, we're increasing our footprint and anybody who would like to come and join us is more than welcome to. Uh, again, it's been an honor. Thank you very much. Uh, I would, uh, it, must be, it must be Chamber Month because we just uh, received an announcement that we also won the Charlie Award for the Wine and Jazz Festival and we'll be accepting uh, that award I believe in June sometime. So we're out there, we're promoting the community. Uh, we appreciate the relationship we've had with City Council and City staff over the years. Uh, it seems like we work really, really well together and we're here to promote commerce and businesses in the area and we appreciate your help and assistance doing that. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Where's the free beer? <laughs> John informed me this morning too that we didn't know that the winner of the cup is now the host of the next multi-chamber event. So we we have All some right. work to do with that too. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you, you too. Uh, Our audience is dwindling. <laughs> Please stay, stay. <laughs> Everybody, oh, I've got, I've got something. I've got something. They all get up and leave. Something more important than that. We've got some really hot things going on. Congratulations. Uh, now is the time if your name is in the running for a nomination for a committee, a board or committee for the city, if you would like to come to the podium and introduce yourself, now would be the time. Seeing none, we will move into our public hearing agenda. And first we have a resolution under public hearings. Yes, this is a resolution which I'll read by title only. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, electing to use uniform method of collection non ad valorem assessment to be levied upon vacant real properties lying within the city of Punta Gorda lot mowing assessment district to fund the city's mandatory lot mowing program services, specifying the unit of measurement for the assessment, setting the maximum annual assessment, adopting the non ad valorem assessment role for the city of Punta Gorda lot mowing assessment district, providing for severability, providing for conflicts, and providing an effective date. Thank you. Public. Okay, any questions for Sharon before we open the public hearing? Okay, this is a public hearing. Those who wish to speak on the resolution for the uniform method of collection for the lot mowing program, please come to the podium, state your name, you have three minutes. This is a public hearing. Anybody wishing to speak? Last call for anybody wishing to speak on the uniform method of collection for lot mowing. Move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve to, to we have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none carried unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving right along. Okay, we have no quasi judicial or ordinance um, second readings or other resolutions. So now we will move into the consent agenda. And we will have citizens' comments on consent agenda items. And first, I will ask any council members if they have items they wish to pull for discussion. I have none. We see no items being pulled off the consent agenda, so we will now go into citizens' comments. If you have any comments on the consent agenda items only, please come to the podium, state your name. You have three minutes. I don't see any citizens' comments. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion, a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Now we move into the regular agenda. Now we have citizens' comments on regular agenda items only, which would be the lot mowing, uh, the land swap, agreement for Lashley Park drainage, discussion of architectural fixtures and furnishings, canal advisory committee recommendation, 
uh, discussion regarding definition of paved, removal of one on-street parking space, discussion regarding two-hour parking on Olympia, and current regulations for Eureka Palms. This is citizens' comments on those items. Please come to the podium, state your name. You have three minutes. Good morning. My name is Rex Cook. Uh, I would like to speak on the issue of establishment of two-hour parking on Olympia Avenue. Uh, I own a property there where the, there's now Jedidas clothing store, ladies' clothing store, and uh, uh, there's always a, a situation there where there, there doesn't seem to be enough parking. Uh, years ago when my office was there, we did have two-hour parking, and I'm not sure what happened to it. I remember finding out it was there because I not through one day and got a ticket. <coughs> and uh, I come out and I said, what is this? She said, where's two-hour parking? And I said, there's no sign. Well, the next day there was a sign. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, somehow the sign went away. But uh, I, I would like to, to request that that two-hour parking put back uh, in that street area. Uh, it would allow better client parking. And, and hopefully prevent some people from parking there for a long period of time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizens' comments on regular agenda items? Next, we move into the budget. We have a resolution. Yes, this is a resolution which I'll read by title only. A resolution adopting a tentative levy of annual non ad valorem <laughs> assessment upon vacant real properties lying within the city of Punta Gorda lot mowing assessment district to fund the city's mandatory lot mowing program services for fiscal year 2014 to 2015, setting a date, time, and place of public hearing to consider final adoption of the assessment and providing an effective date. Uh, this sets the assessment for tentative assessment 150. Public hearing will be September, first meeting in September, same as the canal maintenance in the budget. Move approval of this resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve this resolution. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Next we have, we are moving into unfinished business. And first we have the land swap, Albatross Taylor Road. In front of you um, is a the topic that we discussed at a previous council meeting uh, when it was first brought up um, the proposal was to do a land swap for property at Albatross and Val Harbor for property that the city owns on Taylor Road in addition part of it was that uh, there would be a uh, easement provided for a cut through to Alligator Creek if that project ever materializes. At the time staff recommended uh, moving forward, we also recommended that the property on Albatross and Bell Harbor be used as a staging area for uh, the seawall and seawall cap program. It was very valuable to us. Um, council said uh, that part of the proposal pretty much went over like a lead balloon. <laughs> However, it was recommended that we go back to the PGI Canal, uh, PGI Civic Association to get their view. Mm -hmm. And you have in front of you what their view is. They are recommending moving forward with the land swap, providing that the property on Albatross and Bell Harbor not be used as a staging area. So they concurred <laughs> with City Council. So uh, it's in front of you uh, for discussion to see if you want us to move to the next step to actually uh, put the paperwork together to make it happen. Yeah, I have a, a couple of comments. The, uh, the board of directors of the Civic Association indicated that they did not want that property used for uh, st storage of maintenance materials. I, I would submit that if a, a seawall needed to be replaced in the immediate area, that in that instance, it could and should be used for, for the maintenance of that, those materials. Just one thought that I had. Uh, another comment was uh, there, there was a comment made about the potential for people pulling up in their vehicles, bringing out the cooler, and, and breaking out the fishing rods and going fishing in the area. As we've done in the past, we've precluded certain areas in the city from fishing on bridges and so on like that. I think that's something that should be added to it as well. Uh, also, as far as the uh, adding shrubbery and parking and, and, and so on like that. In my opinion, that 
that's really not necessary. What, what is necessary, I feel, is just adding some shrubbery uh, in the area, uh, cleaning up, putting, doing some maintenance, additional maintenance on the grass so it's not as, as, uh, as yucky looking as it, as it currently is. And I think that would satisfy the neighbors and they'd be quite happy with it. Um, the more I got to think about this situation and we did ask for more feedback and we, we did receive some emails based on the conversations about the cut through that have, that have been going on in the community. And it's, it's kind of hard to convey that the city council is not taking any action on that project and there really at this time is no project. There's no way to fund it. There, the engineering has not been done. So I think until the time there is a potential and there's more work done, this is premature because um, if I'm if I'm correct, the, Mr. McQueen, the, this this land swap was Mr. McQueen's idea. Is that not correct? Or well, it, it, it came out of a, a meeting with uh, with Mr. McQueen and myself. I wanted to find out what there had been conversation in the community about his making available a, a piece of property that would accommodate a land. Uh, a cut between Alligator Creek and, and the PGI canal system. And I wanted to hear firsthand what he was offering and what he had in mind. And out of those discussions uh, came that he would provide that property uh, along with the property in Bell Harbor and Albatross if uh, the city were to transfer some property on, on Taylor and Acklin Road that, that he was interested in. That's how, that's how it came about. So really, um, the, the two properties in question uh, the property on Bell Harbor and Albatross is not buildable per se, so it's really not a potential to be developed. And our property on Taylor Road, I mean, it's just city city owned. It's it, there's no there's no future use for it at this time. So I don't see why we need to accelerate this at this time. Nancy, um, I had a conversation with Mr. McQueen, uh, and I, I know Becky, and um, I remember. In 2006, when I first started volunteering with Team Panagorda, um, Jay Buckley, who's here, had said that Mr. McQueen had uh, offered to allow an easement on his property for a cut through if that ever were to um, uh, take place. And in the conversation that I had with him this week, he said, absolutely, I did say that, and I will allow that. And he said, actually, in, in his mind, um, the, the cut through and providing an easement uh, is a totally separate subject from a land swap. Two independent things um, is what he communicated with me. And so I think if um, that is something that, that the citizens do pu you know, put together and they, and they do want to um, uh, proceed with that, then that's something um, that could happen. Um, and it would, I think, uh, warrant um, community discussion about it. I've had emails from some people in Bernster Isles that have um, thoughts about voter safety and things like that, which I think are, are good, good topics uh, related to that. As far as the land swap, I struggled with, well, how do we do this and, and swap land that is more valuable with land that isn't as valuable? And, um, and in my conversation with, with um, Mr. McQueen, he said that Originally, the intent was to be able to provide docks there. He might have talked to you about this, Tom, that, that there were to have been docks there for people who live on the golf course at St. Andrews. But the city changed the code since he purchased it, and so it's, um, he can't do what he intended to do in the first place. So in some ways, we might have, have um, caused that. But anyway, um, I did some investigation. And Karen, I've got something, if we can put this up on the Elmo, and I'll pass this out to all of you. Um, the, the property that he owns on um, Taylor Road is a, a large parcel of property. And what you see here is that the PG is our piece of property. And his property is um, substantial. I asked him what does he intend to do with this, and he says he, in, he intends to sell it so that a, a developer can build houses there. And if you notice across the street from 
on Taylor Road is Creekside, where there are many homes. And in fact, some homeowners there, I could name names, have said to me they would like to be annexed into the city. Um, the loop annexation is in process, and uh, Walmart has expressed an interest. Um, I talked with the owners of Charlotte Memorial Gardens last week after the, the dedication of our fallen heroes memorial at the Public Safety Building, and, and they're interested in having a conversation about annexation, which puts um, Mr. Queen's property in between Creekside and, and the uh, Charlotte Memorial um, property. So um, I think the benefit to our uh, citizens here in Punta Gorda is the potential for annexation and, uh, and increased um, ad valorem tax revenue for the city and, um, and other revenue. So I think that it, it's, I would be willing to support the land swap with uh, the proviso that Mr. McQueen agree to annex into the city should he become adjacent to the city. I, I mentioned that to him. He's, he doesn't like being annexed into the city because he thinks we have too many rules. But I, I uh, reminded him that our um, building department is much better to do business with. Home builders actually prefer working with the city of Punta Gorda as opposed to the county. And that it would probably be more attractive for someone if it was within the city, uh, that, that the ad valorem tax rates are, are less and the water rates would be less for residences. So um, that was our discussion. Um, he didn't at that point in time say he agreed, but I think that it would be worth us um, uh, making that stipulation because that, that would be then a true benefit to the city as well as to him. Ken? Wouldn't? I'm sorry. No, I thought I saw Ken wanting to. Um, I'm sorry. I just, uh, I kind of agree with you, Rachel. I think it's a little premature. I, I struggled a little bit trying to figure out why we were involved with this. I do see it's two separate issues, the cut through mm -hmm. and this piece of property. That piece of property really has, in my view, doesn't have any benefit to us at all um, as a city. Which piece of property? The, the one be? at uh, PGI, the one that, that he owns. Um, you know, we're not going to, when it was brought to us, it was going to be used for a staging area, which would have been very valuable. Now it really has no value. Um, and if he will annex or if we let him put docks or if, 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 none of those things are, are any even happening. So I really, I guess I'm just trying to figure out, get educated on why we're even talking about this. And, and I'm just quickly looking over these property appraiser records and his land right now is environmentally sensitive. So the city's land is agriculture exempt right now. Um, I think if development happened there, it'd be way, way down the road and it's just totally premature. Carolyn. Carolyn. Well, I guess I, I had a very different take on, on the entire uh, piece. Um, because I, I feel that while it may not happen now, there will be some time in the future where there will be a cut through um, through that area. Uh, I did not have any problem with the, the land swap because I do feel that the property at um, Albatross is a good piece of property for the city to have so that we can manage it and make sure it remains uh, looking good, that we can use it perhaps for bicycles for the kids that are being dropped off at. Uh, uh, from their buses, et cetera. So I have no problem with, our, with that land swap. The fact that it may be, and I like uh, Nancy's suggestion about uh, you know, incorporating that if and when it's possible that that piece of property would be annexed into the, into the city. Uh, my concern was related to that the city would receive an easement or ownership on the, of the property owned by Mr. McQueen to provide that future connection. And my issue was the clarification, are we just talking about a small strip of property? Are we talking about the entire piece of property that he owns there that is environmentally sensitive? And again, I would say I would prefer to do it now and the land swap should include the entire piece of property along with the um, uh, Albatross area for the Taylor Road uh, piece of property because I believe that in the future, the city then would have control. If something happens to Mr. McQueen, he decides to sell that piece of property uh, to someone else, there may be other um, difficulties in the future for any kind of cut through. 
And while we don't know what the situation is in terms of the uh, DEP, the De uh, Department of Environmental Protection, there is a good possibility that we could eliminate a lot of the pollution that is occurring in our canals from all of the boats that are traveling the entire, um, what is it, four or five miles out to, um, through ponds. I mean, that's an awful lot of uh, pollution from the motors, et cetera, that are going through. And that whole back area where they, there is those many, many condos, most of those condos have small power boats that are going through, you know, particularly during season. So my perspective would be, let's do it, let's do it now, but include that entire piece of property uh, that Mr. McQueen has on the, that's environmentally sensitive. Uh, just two things. If, if we don't do anything with the property on Albatross and, and Bell Harbor, it will continue to look the way that it does right now because it's privately owned and the only obligation is to keep it, keep the grass from growing high. And, and uh, to me, if we have an opportunity to change that and make it better for the community, it's something we should be doing. Getting back to the cut, though, if we could have this put on the Elmo, I'd like to, I'm sorry I didn't make copies for everything, but it's something that I had been working with uh, urban development on for the past. Actually, uh, we, they did this about a year ago. The, the horseshoe area that you see on the bottom of the page is La Costa Island Court. That area is about halfway between the Ponce Inlet, and if, if maybe if, Terry, if you could point out Ponce Inlet on there, it might be helpful so everybody gets a picture of it. And the okay. other and the other area would be the proposed location of the up of the, uh, the Alligator Creek cut. Terry, if you could point to where that might be as well. Okay. So right now, all of the boats that are uh, all of the uh, the, prop the property owners that have boats on this property are utilizing Hans Inlet as their only way in and out of the harbor. The area on the top of La Costa Island Court, the Horseshoe area is, as most of the city is, 80% developed. The area down towards the uh, Alligator Creek Cut Inlet is 60% developed. Now, the reason for that it could be that the area came in on the market at a later point in time, or maybe it's because there isn't sufficient access to the water. The, the brown dots on the, the individual pieces of property are all, represent all of the vacant pieces of property on either side of La Costa Island Court. The, the orange section up there represents 105 acres of property that is currently going through discussions with the Florida Army Corps, of, yeah, the Army Corps of Engineers, and the purple is multi-use property that is, only, is undeveloped and waiting for a developer to come in and, and, and make it and make it together, put something together on what, it. What are these two periphery lines? There's red on the left and then a darker color on the right. What do those two lines represent? Mitch, are you, maybe Mitch can help out here. Which lines are you, I'm not sure. Uh, the, the, the two areas, the section, uh, there's a section labeled golf course. That is the area uh, closest to Ponce Inlet on the, the western side of St. Andrews and then uh, the bird section, including portions of the quote unquote golf course section of the city up to uh, La Costa Island to the east. Um, and those are the two areas that were uh, Do they have drawn any out by staff no, uh, they, they have no several years ago regarding the potential benefit areas for a, uh, a, a cut through at Alligator Creek. Okay. So what, what I'm suggesting is that we go through with this land swap and that the city take possession of the property that a, a cut could be built on at some point in the future. I'm also suggesting that the city not, would, we're not using any taxpayer money to develop this cut. If some, if some developers stepped up to the plate and wanted to contribute money towards the development of this cut because they see it as a tool to market their, uh, to build housing, economic development, I think that we should be in a position to have a public-private partnership with these builders. I think that's what we should be doing. And the time, it's available to us now. We don't know what's gonna happen in the future. I think it uh, could potentially provide tremendous economic 
benefit to the city at a time when we can certainly use the funds? I don't think it is the time. I think it is still premature. I, I would I like the idea of the developers coming into the picture, but if that if they saw it that way, they they would be behind this. They would be coming here and saying, yes, this would benefit us, and, and we're not hearing that. And we're hearing um, the residents, and especially when you draw a line down the middle of a street, I think you're going to stir up even more people that say, why am I on this side of the line and those people are on the other side of the line? I think those conversations are so premature, and they're happening in the community because we have gotten some emails that we've had to respond to. and. I just feel like when the time is right, then the property, yes, it could, Mr. McQueen's property could change hands. There's no doubt about that. The city property on Taylor Road is going to be available. Um, if we take Albatross and Bell Harbor, that's one more piece that we have to maintain. We just had this whole discussion about, with the one cent sales tax about pocket parks and, and you know expanding our park program and maintenance is a big, was a big topic of discussion. I mean, if we build it, we have to maintain it. And if we take that over at Bell Harbor and Albatross, first of all, that never came up as even a pocket park location. And you would think that if people wanted that, it would have been, in the discussion it was not so I'm just leery of taking on more property that the city has to maintain maybe it's not beautifully landscaped at the time it's vacant property I mean that's exactly what it is so I just feel like this this is just so premature and I just can't support it Kim um, <clears throat> I don't like the, the line down the middle of those properties I think that's going to be a real problem um, <clears throat> I do, I mean, I do see that if we had the cut through, it would make that property more valuable, which we would get more tax revenue from. Um, I didn't like in here where it says if the project never materializes, what does never mean? Never means never. I mean, it may not material, you know, that the property would revert back to Mr. McQueen. Um, I mean, it's either, because honestly, that's the only reason I see doing it, is to have that potential cut through that if someday this were to happen, I mean, that's going to be a big battle. We have a lot of emails coming through. I mean, it's really not our, you know, we're not going to be paying for it. So it's, it's something that the private uh, sector is taking care of. but. You put a line down people's property, that's exactly what they're going to be doing. Why am I here? Why am I? Could, could I get just clarification on the line that, that you're referring to? This line that, that goes right down the time. middle of this street. La Costa almost. Island. You're talking about the horseshoe line? Is right here, the red. The red right here, yes. The, the only reason that line is there is because that is, was, is equidistant from the Ponce cut to the proposed Alligator Creek cut. That's the only purpose of that. Oh, okay. Well, the purpose eventually would be to do a taxing district of the people in that area to that, pay. That's not what I'm proposing. I'm not proposing a single penny of taxpayer money. And the emails that we've been getting have all been in objection to spending any taxpayer money for this. Okay. I'm not proposing that we spend a penny in taxpayer money. All I'm How proposing, does it get paid for then? Well, well, all I'm proposing is that we accept the property and make it available should a developer want to work with the city to get a cut so they can go and develop the property, maybe sell it for a few more bucks, make it enticing, and it certainly would facilitate boating in the entire area. So you, okay, so you're saying you're going after these development properties. Forget about the golf course and the bird. Forget about that. Exactly, yes. You're saying you're going after the orange? And the purple. And the purple. And That's, the those, vacant those are, multifamily. They, they total eight over 800 multi-development units. Those two, the orange and the purple together. Well, until we hear from them, I'm still on a pause mode. Um, okay, so if what I was hearing in some of the emails was that they were planning on asking the people that it would benefit that are already there and already living there to pay for this cut through. Did I hear right? Can I, can, I, can I just jump in here? If private, <laughs> if private money steps up to the plate and they matter. want to spend their money <clears throat> to dig a ditch, 
and we can work the process through DEP, I think that we should do that. I don't think that we should contribute a penny of taxpayer money to it, but if, if it develops to works into an economic development project for the city, I'm fully supportive of it. Well, until I see those developers come forward, I can't support it. Yeah. Carolyn? I would like, I, well, I, I can, because I think that we should uh, be proactive. We are a boating community. We talk about boating all the time. This is a major, major boating area. Those boaters should have ac better access, more easily, more e easier access. But in addition, if there is a possibility that we can get approval through DEP and the Army Corps and whoever else we need to get approvals from, it seems to me that that would be one of the ways that our city can be progressive in supporting our boaters and our, um, and our economic development. I, I would agree I, with um, Kim. I, if the project never materializes, I don't see that there would be any reversion back to Mr. McQueen. But I would also say I don't know where, how he would have access to that property if there is a cut through. So it would have to be that all of that property would revert or be exchanged for the Taylor Road. Taylor, right now, we're not getting any taxes on that. Once he purchased it, even if it's agricultural, there'll be some taxes that'll go at least to the county. It doesn't even belong to us. But Carolyn, even when you say we should go get DEP approval, that well, I'm is- I'm not saying we should Then who that. are you saying as we? There is this local group. Well, what okay, I'm then saying is- When you say we, it sounds like you mean the city. I would think as Tom was suggesting that if this group was interested, that we would be a The group of developers? It. It could which be developers, group? it could be the citizens that are working on this particular project. The residents the of residents, that area. The residents of the area that are interested in doing it. Mm -hmm. They could form their own special taxing district to do something like that themselves. They could. Um, they could. Mm -hmm. they could. And, and raise the funds however it is they deem that they could do it. I didn't see this as the land swap itself had nothing to do with the cut through. The cut through simply was an easement that he was willing to provide for. As a deed, a deed or, an, or a deed or an easement, an easement, whichever is more, whichever is required to accomplish the cut. And he's uh, yeah, and he saw that as two totally separate things. He he's in his um, uh, the conversation I had with him, two two separate whole separate ideas um, in his mind. So we wouldn't necessarily need to connect a swap with this, but yet just put in place some, an easement so that in, in case something did occur. I would say that I, I would be in favor of you know, putting in place something so that if the residents do uh, are successful, that, they, that it's there. But That's the only benefit to us. I mean, as, 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 as uh, city council hat, I mean, the only, we're responsible for uh, taking care of the city and these dollars, the increased taxes and these dollars in the revenue and, and that kind of thing. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense at all if we're, if we're not gaining anything for our community. Can I, can I mention what we are gaining? We are, according to our strategic plan, enhancing the quality of life in our city. The voters that currently live an hour and a half away from a cut may have a, an opportunity if, a, if private money again steps up to the plate and makes mm -hmm. this happen it may ha have an opportunity to improve their quality of life and tom mm -hmm. when private money steps up to the plate who's who's going to oppose that i mean if the if the you, so that's just not happening at this time we don't even know they could be underwater with their property they it could be headed to a foreclosure it could be under multiple circumstances so until those people come and they say this is our First of all, nobody even knows how much the project's going to cost. And second of all, we don't know what their financial situation is, especially if it's vacant land. I mean, they haven't developed it yet, so their development potential, we, it's so many unknowns but that Mayor, it's just in the future. None of that matters. If it happens, if they can make it happen, mm -hmm. they make it happen. Doesn't matter. Then why do we have to move forward with the swap now? Because the land, because the time, the land, the opportunity for us to have control of the other property is here and it's now. The we, cut through we, land? The cut through land. Well, Nancy's yeah. saying that that's, that it, we can do that without doing the swap. In her, in her conversation, that's what she said that could happen. And As I would rather. independent 
And I would rather that we have control over that. I don't want to see us looking down the road and saying, oh, yes, well, Mr. McQueen said this, but now he sold the property, and the new owners say, whoa, I'm not doing anything. I, I say think let's that take has advantage. to be clarified. I think we take advantage of the situation right now if Mr. McQueen is willing to swap the land with Albatross and the, um, the area for the cut-through to swap that for Taylor Road. I would, think, I would definitely want to move on that, and that would be my motion. If, is that a motion? That is my motion. Can I clarify something? Okay, if he agrees to that land, the additional land you're talking about, and uh, and there's no reverting it back. Okay, right. so you're talking so that we you know because the other the land swap piece, what you're saying is two different things. So mm -hmm. that makes me feel like we don't even care about that strip of land. I mean, I know it's well, not attractive. I'm talking. I'm not talking about the cut, the possible cut through. I'm talking about just that strip the of albatross. land. I, the albatross. I'd like to make an amendment. Uh, and pro with the provision that should his land become adjacent to the city, that he annexes into the city. Wouldn't that be subject to the individual that he buys that property to? I mean, it would, if, if he's going to try and, and sell that property. He, I'm he, talking about the land on Taylor Road. What right. property is he? The, the, well, I would agree with you. The, the land on the land. Yeah, on, this whole thing. The land yeah. on Taylor Road. I, I think we're putting too many restrictions. And why? Yeah. Why are we giving him property to turn around and sell? I mean, this is this is. What, well, can you he, read the motion again, please? Actually. Um, <laughs> and can can Nancy amend Carolyn's well, motion? Well, we really should have a second, a second on, on the motion, motion before the motion oh. is amended. Okay. So. If uh, we motion. could start with Council Member, okay, what's your motion? Restate Carolyn. your motion. I guess my motion would, I, then I can remake my motion, can't I? There was no can, second. There can, was no second. Can yes. I assist sure. in, the, in the making of yes, the motion? Um, with respect to the uh, land that's um, in the vicinity of Alligator Creek, the condition that I think you're looking for is that the entire parcel identified as P5 be conveyed to the city in fee simple with no restrictions. Thank you. There you go. What, what does and that would be mean? That, well that means that um, there's no reversionary provision we own it there's no ownership it doesn't ownership of the cut through entire cut through property yes as well as the albatross uh, property would be swapped for the Taylor Road property I, w I would not add the the annexation because as Tom was saying um, you don't know what the situation will be by the time that annexation might even be possible. Who would I'm not even in favor of ab adding the swap to this because it's really two separate things. But the swap is really all we're talking about then. She just made a motion to swap. No, yes. I know. Right. But I'm just. What's, can I just, what's, what's on the agenda today reflects the conversations that Howard and I have been having together with Mr. McQueen. That's what's on the agenda. Okay, well, there is a motion. There is no second. Say it again. Okay, my motion was to um, basically swap the Taylor Road property for the Albatross piece of property as well as P5, the fee simple. You, is it you, P1 you, or P5? Yeah, you have, you have it's like P5. You, yeah, you need it. Can I just jump in here? Sure. You need a clarification. Could you, sh could, Terry, could you put on the, on the, on the, the, the screen? the entire property of P5 that we're talking about because it's really two separate areas and we need to clarify that. If you, if you, if you look at the rectangle where the P5 property is right now, McQueen's property borders on the property that's called P-1-7. Okay. That property, is, he wants to maintain that property. I don't see that on the map, so I don't yeah. know what you're... It's right above right the P5. P-1-7. Right okay, there. right there. Okay. Right. That, if he ever decides to work out a deal with the people who live in uh, the, the property that uh, is adjacent to it, he may and want to develop that. He mm -hmm. has that possibility, and he owns the property. What he's talking about is taking a piece of... Uh, take, giving us a deed or an easement through the, the other property that is between the canal system and the uh, Alligator Creek cut there, 
in whatever size that is required by DEP to allow for the construction of a canal going through there, including uh, whether it's uh, seawalls or whether it's riprap or whatever might be needed, a 50-foot or a 75-foot strip, what, whatever is required to get boats from the PGI canal system out into Alligator Creek. That is what the conversations that Howard and I have had with him. Okay, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? We, we actually still don't have a full motion. Councilmember Freeland was interrupted. Okay, she Carolyn, do you have a motion? I will try one more time. Okay. <laughs> okay, it is not all of P5 then. Okay. How do we describe that, Mr. Attorney? Well, um, <clears throat> and again, it, I, there's several options that you have. I mean, um, you <clears throat> can make a motion that talks in terms of P5 with the exception of that portion of P5 that is adjacent to P1-7 or uh, um, have that portion of P5 that would be necessary for the cut through, but that's too, in my mind, ambiguous. So, um, that's what I uh, you know, I, we don't want to be and are you specifying owners? What was the wording? Uh, fee yeah, simple simple. Title, fee simple title. With uh, no reversionary interest. No I mean, reversionary from interest. From my perspective as an attorney, that puts the city in the strongest position with respect to current and future use of that property. Um, even if a cut through is never done, you can use it for parkland or something else, you know, potentially. But uh, you have that right in perpetuity once you own it. So that's the way I would describe the motion if that was the, if that was the wishes of the city council. That may not be acceptable to Mr. McQueen, but that's, that would be the thing that, as an attorney for the city, would, would, might be my recommendation. Okay, so I will try one more time. Um, that we would swap the property at Taylor Road the city currently owns with the property that Mr. McQueen owns at both Albatross and uh, the Alligator Creek cut through uh, piece of property to include everything except that portion of land that uh, is contiguous with contiguous P1-7. With P1-7. And that would be um, complete ownership, fee simple. No reversion. No reversion. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Three to two. Can I have a show of hands for no? Thank you. For no. No. For no. Thank you. I'd like to clarify. I just feel that we're missing an opportunity for annexation. And I think that that's, that's my issue. Because I think that's, that is a true benefit to the city. It okay. may be long term, but it's. This is not a public hearing, but I did see a citizen come to the podium, and I will give citizens three minutes to comment. Please come to the po podium, state your name. You have three minutes. Jay Buckley, Boaters Alliance. Uh, you're referring to um, private money and, and uh, efforts to, to uh, get some further definition of the cut through project. I can tell you this, uh, Voters Alliance has now raised uh, almost $6,000 toward the $7,300 that uh, Hans Engineering is going to charge to do the preliminary studies for the cut through. And uh, Mr. Uh, Wilson has stated that he probably would have that work done in 60 days or less. Uh, so we'll be able to come back to you folks uh, with some more definite figures as to permitting uh, costs, uh, project costs, and so forth um, before too awful long. And uh, we're very happy with the way it is progressing now. Um, I tell you that I know you've received, a, uh, I've been through this before, and I know you've been covered over with emails about folks uh, because they paid more for their properties down closer to a, an easier route. Personally, I think that's a very selfish attitude. And most people in this room 
haven't been here long enough to remember that the old canal uh, was mitigated, closed through mitigation to allow for the dredging of ponds in 2005. That was to be a one-time assessment. We are all still paying for that assessment to dredge ponds. So, folks, you got to go back to be fair. You've got to go back and look at these things. But we're not asking those folks to pay for this cut through. That's why that line's there. And anybody to, as uh, Councilman Kavanaugh uh, pointed out, uh, back in the, when we went through this before, uh, those um, condos back there were vacant. Now those condos are almost full of people and those people have boats. And uh, they deserve, they've, bought, they've come here, they've bought property, they bought a condo and they deserve um, the waterfront as much as the other folks. So we'll be back to you with a report uh, as soon as we get it. Thank you.